Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through some easy examples on type 3 trick questions, which are equations in terms of constants. So for our first example, we are given sine 50 degrees equals k. So we have our trig expression here, sine 50 in terms of a constant, and we asked to determine two other trig functions in terms of this constant k. Okay, so step one is going to be to extract our variables and then use Pythagoras to solve for our missing variable. So we told that sine 50 degrees equals k, and I'm going to rewrite k as k over 1, so we have our fraction. And then our definition for sine is y over r, so we can infer from this that y is k and r is 1. So y is equal to k and r is equal to 1, okay? Now we can use Pythagoras to solve for x, that's going to be r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Our reason is going to be Pythagoras, okay? So 1 squared would equal to x squared plus k squared. So x squared is going to be 1 minus k squared. We'll square root both sides to solve for x. And that gives us x being equal to root 1 minus k squared. And in this case, we'll take a positive x because we know that sine 50 lies in the first quadrant and it's equal to a positive k. So we're working with the first quadrant where both x and y are positive. So we've solved for x, y, and r. Okay. So we know that for 50 degrees, our x value is root 1 minus k squared, y is positive k, and r is positive 1. So we can use these to solve our question. Now question 1, tan 50 degrees. This 50 is the same as the 50 in the question and the same as the 50 we've calculated our x, y, and r for. So we can just simply put in our definition for tan, which is y over x, and then substitute our values for x and y. That's going to be k over root 1 minus k squared. And if you were a bit pedantic like me, you wouldn't leave a third in the denominator because that would be an unrationalized denominator. So I take k over root 1 minus k squared and multiply that by root 1 minus k squared over root 1 minus k squared. So I'm effectively just multiplying by 1. And then I'd get k times root 1 minus k squared over 1 minus k squared. So that's just good manners in maths. It's like etiquette, like saying please and thank you. You never leave a third in the denominator. So we have tan 50 to be k into root 1 minus k squared over 1 minus k squared. Just a note though, if you didn't rationalize your denominator, you wouldn't have gotten the wrong answer. It would still be correct. Now for our second question, cos 130 degrees, right? We have our x, y, and r, but in terms of 50 degrees, we said x was root 1 minus k squared, y was positive k, and r was 1. But we don't have x, y, and r for 130. So we need to change this 130 or manipulate it to look like 50. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use reduction formula. We know that 130 lies in the second quadrant because it's between 90 and 180. So if we wanted to use supplementary reduction formula, that would be 180 pulled backwards, 180 minus. So we can say cos 130 is the same as cos 180 minus 50 degrees. Okay, and we have our supplementary angle 180 there. So we allow to cross it out and keep our trig function the same. It's going to be cos 50, right? But now we'll check our original. Cos 130, we said, was in the second quadrant. And we know cos is only positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So in quadrant 2, it will be negative. So our answer here is negative cos 50 degrees. So we can put in our definition for cos negative cos 50 degrees would be negative x over r. And now we can substitute our variables 
in because we know that 450, we've already calculated our x, y, and r. So that would be negative root 1 minus k squared all over 1, which is negative root 1 minus k squared. So that's our first example done. So for our next example, we are told that 1050 degrees equals t. So we have our trig uh, function in terms of a constant, t in this case, and we have to express other trig functions in terms of t, right? So step one, we write our equation here, 1050 degrees equals t over one. We'll write it out as a fraction. So we can put in our definition for tan here, y over x, and infer from that that y is t and x is 1. So y equals t and x equals 1. And in this case, it will be positive and positive because tan 50 is in the first quadrant, and we know tan is positive in the first quadrant, where both x and y are also positive. So we'll use Pythagoras to solve for r. So we know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Pythagoras, okay. Now we'll say that's going to be equal to 1 squared plus t squared. So 1 plus t squared is equal to r squared. We'll square root both sides. That's going to be 1 plus t squared. So r is going to come out to be root 1 plus t squared. And remember, r is always positive because it's a length. So our final answer will be r equals positive root 1 plus t squared. So 450 degrees, we've, we've gotten our x, y, and r. We know that x in this case is 1, y is t, and r is root 1 plus t squared. So we can use this to solve our question. So our first um, question is to solve for tan 310 degrees. Now, obviously, 310 degrees isn't the same as 50 degrees. So we can't use our x, y, and r because they've only been found for 50. So we have to manipulate 310 in some way. So we'll use our reduction formula to get 310 to look like 50. Now, we know that 310 degrees lies in quadrant 4 because it's between 270 and 360. So it's going to be 360 pull backwards, right? So we'll rewrite 310 in terms of 360. We'll say tan 310 degrees is equal to tan 360 minus 50 degrees, okay? Now we have the supplementary angle 360 over here, so we can cross it out. Our trig function will remain the same, so it'll remain tan, and then we have 50 degrees. Now always remember to check your sign. So we'll check the original tan 310 degrees, we said tan 310 was in quadrant 4. And we know that tan is only positive in quadrants 1 and 3. So it must be negative in quadrant 4. So our final answer here is going to be negative tan 50 degrees. And then we can uh, put in our definition for tan, which is y over x. And that's going to be negative y over x because we have negative tan 50 degrees. So we'll substitute our variables in. That would be negative t over 1 which is negative t. So our final answer for tan 310 is going to be negative t. Now for our next bit, we are asked to find the value of tan 40 degrees. Now, we can't um, use our x, y, and r because we only know x, y, and r for 50, not 40. So we're going to have to do something to this 40 to make it equal to 50. So our best way to solve this question is going to be to use complementary reduction formula because we know that 40 plus 50 is equal to the complementary angle of 90. So 50 in the question and 40 over here, if we sum them, we get 90. So we'll use complementary reduction formula. We'll say that tan 40 degrees is the same as tan 90 minus 50 because 90 minus 50 is the same as 40. So now because we have the complementary angle 90 there, we can cross it out and then we have to change tan to its co-function. So the co-function of tan is cot, right? So that's going to come out to be cot 
50 degrees. And our final answer will also be positive because tan 40 is in the first quadrant where tan is positive. So now we have a 50 here. So we can use our x, y, and r to solve the question. So the definition of cot is x over y. It's the inverse of tan because tan and cot are also reciprocals as well as co-functions. We'll substitute in x as 1 there and y as t. So tan 40 is equal to 1 over t. So tan 40 we said was 1 over t. Now for our final question, we have to find cos 140 degrees. And now 140 isn't the same as 50, so we're going to have to also manipulate this somehow. So we know 140 lies in quadrant 2 because it's between 90 and 180. So we'll rewrite it in terms of 180 to make use of our supplementary reduction formula. So that'll be cos. So whilst you might be more comfortable in using supplementary reduction formula to reduce angles, if we use that, it, it wouldn't work in this case because if you have to say that cos 140 was equal to cos 180 minus something, you'd say 180 minus 40, right? Which would give you cos 40 degrees and that would be negative. Now, 40 isn't the same as 50. So this wouldn't give us the 50 we're looking for. So instead, we're going to have to use complementary reduction formula. We'd rather say that cos 140 is equal to cos 90 plus something because we're still in the second quadrant, so we can say 90 push forward. So 90 plus 50 is the same as 140. So that's going to give us then sine 50 degrees. Remember, we change our trig function because we're using this complementary angle, 90 degrees, and we'll check our sine. Cos 140 was in the second quadrant where cos is negative. So our final answer will be negative sine 50. And from here, we can go ahead and put in our definition for sine y over r, and that's going to be negative. Now we can take a look over here. We know y is t and r is root 1 plus t squared for 50 degrees, and we'll substitute those in. So that would then become negative t all over root 1 plus t squared. And again, we have a third in the denominator, so you could write this as your final answer, but I'd prefer to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 1 plus t squared over root 1 plus t squared, and that would give me negative t times root 1 plus t squared all over 1 plus t squared. So that would be your final answer. And for our next example, we are given sine 40 degrees equals a, and we ask to express 2 minus 2 cos squared 40 degrees all over sine 220 degrees. So we're first going to start with step one, which is to write this trig function out here and then extract our variables. So that'll be a over one if we write it as a fraction. And then our definition for sine is y over r. So from this, we get y is equal to a and r is equal to one. And our x is unknown. So we'll solve for x using Pythagoras. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. That's going to be Pythagoras, okay? So r is 1, x is unknown, and our y we found to be a, right? So we'll say x squared is equal to 1 minus a squared. So x, we can square root both sides to solve for x, and that's going to be x being equal to root 1 minus a squared. And we'll say that our answer would be positive root 1 minus a squared, because sine 40 is in the first quadrant where both x and y are positive. So now for 40 degrees, we've solved for x, y, and r. We know that for 40, x is root 1 minus a squared, y is a, and r is 1. So we can use this to solve our question. So now you can see here we have 40, so it would be easy to substitute our x, y, and r in. But the sine 220 is going to pose a problem, okay? 
because sine 220 isn't the same as 40, so we can't use our x, y, and r for 220 degrees. So for sine 220, let's just write that over here, sine 220, how do we make that into 40 degrees? Well, we can use our reduction formula to do that. We know that 220 lies in the third quadrant because it's between 180 and 270. So we can use the supplementary reduction formula, 180 push forward. So we'll rewrite sine 220 in terms of 180. That would be sine 180 plus 40 degrees. We can cancel our 180, keep our trig function the same. So that would then become sine 40 degrees. Now we'll check our original sine 220. We know that it was in quadrant 3 where sine is negative because sine is only positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So our final answer would be negative sine 40 degrees. So we can substitute that into the equation here. So this would all be equal to 2 minus 2 cos squared 40 degrees all over negative sine 40 degrees. So we've replaced sine 220 with negative sine 40. And now we can go ahead and substitute our x, y, and r in there. That would be 2, minus 2 times x over r because that's the definition for cos. And in this case, it's squared. Remember the square there. All over minus definition for sine is y over r. And now we can substitute in our x, y, and r. That would be 2 minus 2 times x we found to be 1 minus a squared all over r is 1. And that's going to be all over negative y is a and r is 1. So we have 2 minus 2 times root 1 minus a squared all over negative a. So that would be our final answer. And if you didn't like the negative in the denominator, you could have just taken it to the top and said that would be 2 root 1 minus a squared minus 2 all over a. So that's our final answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh.